Are you still living in like the 1990s? Because I'll be honest, I really don't know that many people that are thin and work for it. That's like mostly every single thin person. I think that this person doesn't understand that being thin means that to a certain degree, you are practicing the ability to not eat as much as a fat person. So to that degree, that's probably a little bit more than just being a fat person because if you're a fat person, that just means you're eating things to make you fat. So just from a very basic degree, that person is doing more than you. I also want to apologize if you hear a helicopter flying above my house right now. There is a helicopter. They must have heard that my penis was massive. Um, I'm sorry. That's just what it is. I have to air my dick out every once in a while. I throw it out the window to ensure that I can properly cleanse it and air it out and things such and so forth. So they must have thought it was some kind of like, I don't know, like weapon of mass destruction. It's just my dick. You know, I try to tell them, but they, uh, they're, they're still investigating. But regardless, if you hear the helicopter, that's what it is. Anyway. I know a lot of people who are just naturally thin, have been thin their whole life, have a fast metabolism. Yeah, but like, I don't care about your anecdotal evidence. And just because somebody you know is, I don't know, naturally thin, I don't even know what that means. Are you also trying to make a case that people could be naturally fat? Because that's obviously not the case. And even if somebody was quote unquote naturally thin, can you please explain what that means exactly, dude? Because being naturally thin just means that somebody's not eating exactly more than what they should be eating. So, no, I can't say that they're naturally thin. There's no such thing as somebody being naturally thin. They might just work out more. They might just be more active than you or they just might not need as much energy consumption as you. Like, for instance, a lot of women um, that are like five foot two or five foot three don't even actually need that many calories. Like, I know if you're going to say anecdotal evidence, I'm going to say anecdotal evidence. I've met a lot of women that are like five foot or like five foot two and they only need to eat like 1500 calories and they always tell me it sucks a lot of dick because they want to eat more and they see all these big men eating like 3000 calories and they're fine but that's the difference right you are not the same as those people that are bigger or stronger or have more room to grow because you're not the same caliber you're not that same person and that's okay because that doesn't mean you're lesser than that person it just means you have a different body and you shouldn't be looking at other people and going well they can do it and why can't i do it because that makes you fat that's not how it works like you can do certain things and i can't do certain things you can go into the woman's bathroom with your meat hanging out and probably nobody cares when i do that people think i'm weird so there's different like different standards apply to different people if you're somebody that's a very small girl and you weigh and you're like five foot one, five foot two, and you're upset that you can only eat 1500 calories when the guy next to you who's six foot four can eat, I don't know, like 2,500 calories, no problem, probably could eat way more than that, and he's fine because he's like six foot eight, then yeah, dude, I get it. It sucks, but simultaneously, that's the way it is. I don't understand why you would even bring up this anecdotal evidence. There's always going to be a case where somebody can do something that you can't do, and then you're going to be upset about that. I don't think it serves a purpose, though, but go off, queen. People who are just naturally thin, have been thin their whole life, have a fast metabolism, like it's in their genes, and their family is very similar. But I honestly don't know that many people who like actively work to be thin. Everyone, literally anybody that is thin is working. Even if they're not like doing it purposefully, they might be doing it passively. Like for me personally, right? I know that I could be fat and I was, I don't know if I was fat, but I definitely had a little bit of love handle action when I was like really going to the gym and I was like trying to maximize the amount of calories, right? If you have, just, just with some context, right? When I was like at my thinnest, I was like maybe 22 and I weighed, I think at my thinnest, I was like under 110 pounds. And that was with boots. That was with clothes on and everything like that. I was like really, really thin. And I decided that I was going to not be thin anymore. So what did I do is like I went to the gym and I started eating like a lot. And I built up appetite because I had no appetite before. And even now I have to like really, really force myself to eat food. But anyway, so I was eating tons and tons of food. And I was going to the gym. And I remember like I was building muscle, like good muscle too. A lot of fat too, which is fine too, because I didn't have any fat, I had like zero fat. So I needed fat, but it's okay. I went to the gym and I worked out for like months and months and months and months. And then eventually I remember one day I was like looking in the mirror and I was like, flex. I was like, oh yeah, that shit. Wait, hold up. What the fuck is this? I had love handles, dude. And that was not something I wanted. And the reason why I had love handles is because I was consuming more calories than my body was burning in comparison to like what I was working out. So no, uh, it, it, what did I do? I stopped eating as many calories and I was like burning off that fat because I didn't need those, lunf, those love handles, right? So even in this particular scenario, 
Um, yeah, uh, people that are thinner, they're thin because they practice good nutrition. They practice the ability to go to the gym or maybe just not go to the gym, just eat less than what they need. And or they're eating exactly what they do need in order to live. So yeah, they are doing more than you. And I know that sucks to say because you're fat and you're eating way more than what you need. And that's literally obvious. So I get that it makes you feel bad, but that's the truth. Honey, sis, slight queen edges. I honestly don't know that many people who like- And again, I don't really care about this like anecdotal evidence of like, oh, I don't know many fat people. I don't know many thin people that actually do this. Um, that's dumb because they're all doing it. And just because you don't acknowledge it in this, this particular type of way doesn't even make sense. And again, I don't really care about your anecdotal evidence, but all right, go ahead. Actively work to be thin. And the problem Sometimes is you don't need to actively work to be thin in the same way that you don't actively work to be fat. Like most people that are fat didn't go out of their way with the imagination of like, oh, I'm going to gain 300 pounds this month. I'm going to like really eat like tons and tons of food. There are those people and there are people that like beat off to women that eat excessive amounts of calories on camera, which is a weird kink. But you could beat off to those women, right? I mean, if that's what you want to do. I've met dudes that beat off to like way weirder stuff, right? Like women that fart on cakes. I feel like it's a little bit worse. Hmm. Well, if they if they fart on cakes and they eat the cake after, it might be a little bit worse. But there's an entire industry, porn industry, dedicated to big women eating high denominations of food while guys on the other end donating like hundreds of dollars to them so they can supply the food that they're going to eat next. By the way, I wonder what that ROI is on being a feeder. Like if you're a woman and you're making like, let's say, for instance, you do a live stream or like, I don't know what you do exactly. I don't think you can do only fans and with 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 food at least that's what somebody told me um because the food is i guess like not cool or something like that i, I would have thought it like whipped cream would have been cool like like i guess not can't do can't do food on only fans but whatever websites you're using and you i don't know you're eating like a ton a ton a ton of food oh maybe they kind of like feederism i guess yeah but anyway you're eating a ton a ton of food and like how much does this food even cost because like some of these women will be eating like Hot Pockets, dude. Hot Pockets are a lot of money. They're like five, five, six bucks for a pack, which is crazy. They're eating like four Hot Pockets. They got a whole cake. Cakes are like 30 bucks. That's crazy. Um, I only have like one cake a year, and I didn't even have a cake last year for my birthday because that shit was really expensive. But there's just like so much money. So like if somebody – like if you do a stream and you're just like beating your shit off, or I guess you don't beat off. You're just eating food. Um, and then you eat like, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 dollars worth of food and you only get like 30 dollars of donations. You just like reward people with eating like Oscar Mayer wieners the next fucking, the next fucking live stream. Like you guys didn't donate enough for me so that now I'm going to eat like terrible, disgusting food that's not, you guys don't want to see this. I don't know. Like, let me know if you know anything about that. As you're equating like morality and like hard work with someone's body size. And yes, that's exactly what it is. Yes, you should feel morally, you should feel morally inferior to somebody if you do nothing about your body compared to like, because oftentimes these people are not recognizing that there is a lot of, there's a lot of responsibility in taking care of yourself and a lot of people don't take care of themselves. This is an honest fact. So many people um, go through their day just completely shitting on themselves. And I always say like, you should take care of yourself as though you were taking care of somebody else. Like if you were taking care of your mom, you were taking care of your dad, you were taking care of your child, you were taking care of whoever, you should take care of yourself in that same format. Not like, obviously if you're taking care of a baby, you have to force feed them fucking food and shit like that. I'm not saying that. Don't feed yourself like baby foods. But you know what I'm saying? Like from a very general perspective, you should be treating yourself as though you were going to be treating those people within your particular context. So a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just eat garbage and they don't, they don't actually walk and they don't do shit for themselves, which is really, really sad. But uh, anyway. Morality and like hard work with someone's body size. And that's literally not how it works. She's projecting OD here. She doesn't want to hear this because she knows that it is the truth. And to a certain degree, that's going to make her feel bad because she's doing none of it. Read any medical study that has come out since like 2018. That doesn't, you can't just say read, read medical studies and just end it there. Also, I'm going to direct you to my lean diabetes video in which I talk about thin people who get diabetes. So? Because again, just because they look thin doesn't mean they're healthy. That's a weird way of trying to, so what I'm basically getting from you is that thin people can get diabetes. Therefore, fat people getting diabetes is not necessarily a problem with the weight because Thin people are also getting the same disease, and that has obviously nothing to do with weight. Therefore, your argument is invalid, which is a stupid-ass thing to say because that's like somebody saying, oh, you can just get shot at any time. Like, you could just be walking down the street and get shot as opposed to, like, being in Afghanistan in, like, 2001. Like, 
oh yeah totally fucking right yeah totally like the comparison is totally cool yeah you're just walking down the street i'm sure that those two things are completely similar right no obviously fucking not the chances of you getting shot are like significantly increased in like afghanistan or something like that or like detroit i don't know the point i'm making is Yes, I agree that thin people can get disease and illnesses that are also that are also prominent in fat people, but that doesn't negate or take away the it all comes down to these like averages, right? It's the averages, dude. Um when somebody says women on average, women wear more makeup than men, would you disagree with that? I'm sure that some people would go, David, that's not that's not true. Like men wear makeup. I know men wear makeup. I know they do, but compared to women, they don't wear makeup, okay? Like when somebody says, who wears makeup more, men or women, and you say women, you're fucking right. That's just what it is. Generally speaking, that's just what it is. Generally speaking, people that are fat are gonna get diabetes more. People that are fat are gonna suffer more illnesses attributed to being fat compared to people that are thin that are not gonna suffer those same illnesses to the same degree. So like, yes, like I'm sorry that we're all fucking human beings <laughs> and that the difference is the sensitivities of those things, okay? But anyway, whatever, dude, this woman's dumb. I'm just gonna let you listen to this person who I think explained it really well. And that brands. Okay, hold on, wait, let's see what she said. The problem with plus size sales, the prob the prob is plus size sales don't equal or surpass the straight size sales that were lost due to reduced inventory numbers game. No, it's a numbers game. Pl a, I'm plus size, tired of shopping by bathrooms and plates. Okay, so just to let you guys know, most retailers, just for some context here. Most retailers, when they have plus size clothing, which apparently is not XXXLs, like those are like basic, those are straight size, by the way. So if you're like an XXL, that's a normal size person, apparently. But anything above that, like if you're a 17X, then that's plus size, obviously, which is crazy. It's an incredibly ambiguous term. But anyway, if you have retailers that are making these plus size clothing, so let's just say 3X and above, um, often what they'll do is that they'll take all of the clothing items that they're selling. Let's say, for instance, they have small, medium, and large, and then plus size clothing, right? Let's say for instance, the shirt that's a small is $5 and the shirt that's a large is like $7, right? But in between that, the prices are like, you know, small, medium, large, whatever. The, the shirts that are like 7X, for instance, or 8X would be like $20. What they'll do is they'll take the average across how much it costs for all of those shirts and they'll just put a blanket price upon all of them. So for instance, because the shirt costs $5 to make, they wanna upcharge it obviously. So they'll say $10, but because the increased cost to make those plus sizes, those just say $15, if that makes any sense, because the plus sizes cost way more. So in a way, a lot of retailers, not all retailers will do this, but most of them here in the United States and um, most westernized countries will do it like that, where they'll just blank it across, like they'll general statement across it. And the problem with that is that um, those clothes that are very, very plus size sit on, they do sh sit on shelves and they take up more shelf space depending on how big they are. And then also, um, the reason why they sit on shelves is because most of these people that are at these higher giant nor gidorbis, um, sizes are not going outside. They're just staying inside perpetually all day. Do you think these people are going to go outside shopping? Fuck no, dude. Hell no. And then also if they do go outside shopping, most of the time the clothes are not going to fit because for one, just because you are. Uh, uh, let's say for instance, a six X, you, do you think that that shirt at a six X is going to fit you the same way that it's going to fit another person? That's also at six X. No, that's not how that works because your body is going to distribute that fat differently. So that's also a problem. Um, so it's just like, it's, 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 it's a, it's a numbers. It, the whole thing is just a nightmare. You're going to, you're, you're just losing regardless, which is one of the reasons why even if a company did come out and go, Hey, we're going to make plus size clothing. They might done it for like a year and then realize like, holy shit. This is not practical. It's kind of like whenever, you know, when like kick started off kick live streaming and they were like, oh, we're not going to have TOS. We're not going to have this. We're not going to have that. And then they realized like slowly but surely that they actually needed to implement TOS because people were being fucking crazy. And then eventually had to root. They eventually did the same thing that Twitch and other live streaming places had to do. It's kind of like rediscovering. It's like rediscovering the rules that you were uh, disagreeing with to begin with. And then you slowly started realizing like, oh, wait. There's a reason why these rules were in place. It's the same thing here. Like a lot of these companies didn't realize that the reason why they didn't sell these clothes is because it wasn't practical. And then when they realized it, they were like, oh shit, never mind. Let's not sell it. You understand? It's like that. Let you.
listen to this person who I think explained it really well. And that brands don't like to make plus size clothing is because the profit margins are not the same as when you manufacture clothing for a straight size. That is true, just a general way of speaking. You're not gonna sell as many clothes because even though there are more plus size people in America than there are like thinner people, again, as you get up, it just comes down to how plus size are you? If you're very, very, very fat, plus size is such a fucking crazy term, by the way, it's so ambiguous, but if you're very, very, very obese, you're not buying clothes. You're just not. You can barely walk. I don't know what you're talking about. So it just comes down to what sensitivity of plus size you are. How fat are you? What's your level of obesity? What's the level of goddamn you're massive? So what I mean by this, and we'll just do like very basic examples. You might sell a t-shirt for $50. but That's you... crazy, dude. Ain't nobody buying a t-shirt. If you're buying a t-shirt for 50 bills, that's crazy. You're going to make it through sizes extra small to large. It might only cost you $20 to manufacture it. If you make it in sizes, you know, 1X, 2X, 3X, it might cost you now $25 to manufacture. So instead of having a $30 profit on the t-shirt, you're now taking a $25 profit on the t-shirt. It's still profitable and it still works out in your favor, but the profit margins are not as high. And so some companies are weird and petty and like don't want to... It's, it's fine to say that, dude, but oftentimes the proof is in the pudding it doesn't come it, it doesn't come down to making less profit. A lot of companies will just take that hit, but it also comes down to are the clothes even selling at all? Because like if you're going 3x, 4x, that might be okay. But then you go, we need more inclusive sizes, and then you go seven, eight, nine X. Those sizes are most definitely not gonna sell. That's crazy to think those sizes are gonna sell. So that's where it comes down to, bro. And if you can't be inclusive to all these people, then they're not going to like it regardless. And it's a lose-lose because even if you do make it inclusive for all the sizes, you're not going to sell those clothes. And then also, the clothes that you do have on the shelf don't fit everybody of that size because your bodies are so incredibly mismatched and you have literal, like, entire shapes and beings growing on your body that no way any clothes are going to fit you in general. So it's a lose, 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 lose. There's no, literally no benefit, which is one of the reasons why I say if you want to be a pretty girl, if you want to be hashtag metrosexual, then what you got to do is like I don't, lose some weight. I don't understand how you, these people can literally be out here for decades of their life complaining about how I can't find clothes that fit me. I can't find clothes that are pretty. I can't find clothes that is. You're dying. I don't even understand why you would even want to go out there and buy clothes on a body that's literally fermenting on a daily basis. You're, you're literally on, uh, completely destroying your body. And then you're focusing on things that are just completely irrelevant. I want you guys to wear clothes. Obviously, I don't want to see the, the folds, flaps, and other things such as so forth. But you guys are focusing on things that are like, let's be honest here for a second. You got way bigger problems, no pun intended. The point is that it is still profitable to make plus size clothing and I posted- There's no way she just saw one video and was like, I knew it. This is exactly what I needed. Some some random woman making a video on the internet. This is exactly the proof I needed. The point is that it is still profitable to make plus size clothing and I posted a video a couple back in which they project the plus size fashion industry to get to over six hundred million dollars by twenty twenty seven. Right now, it's at like four hundred eighty million. But they would also have to market well. They would have to let people know that plus sizes are in store because plus size people don't just walk into any store. Yeah, they're not walking in general. They're just not. Like that's that's a factual statement that you are literally negating the very key aspect of these people are not going out and shopping. Expecting their size to be there. There are a lot of reasons why straight size people will walk into any store and expect their size to be there and plus size people will not. That's why they sell better in store. We don't know they're there if they are there. And if they are there, most of the time, they are not what we would want to buy. Let's talk about- It's it's just like this woman saw one video and she was like, the proof I needed, I knew it, I knew it. It's like when you hear something and then you look for something to confirm your bias, right? This is what that is. You know what I'm talking about? And it's really tough because I understand that she really wants to be right on this and I see it. I really do see it. And it's fine to feel like you want to be right. It's fine to feel like you want to, you know, you you want to prove yourself right and all this other stuff, but you can't just go for one video. Like it's obviously not the case. Can we look a little bit further, like a little bit under the iceberg a little bit? You guys, your bodies are not uniform. It's just not. If I'm small, if I'm wearing a small, which I do, I wear a small. 
compared to another guy that wears small, but he's like maybe a little bit bigger than me. The clothes are going to fit him the same way that it's going to fit me because he's a small and I'm a small. It's the same shit. Um, same thing is you go up to a large, your body's all form that same uniform shape. When you're big, I, you, well, I don't even understand what the fuck your bodies would be doing. Like, what you know, like what is, you know, sometimes it goes like this and then it goes straight down on that side. The legs sometimes don't even work. Like they don't even look like legs. Yeah, dude, it's obvious. Like, you guys don't have practical body shapes for clothing. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. About the disparity between straight size clothing availability and plus size clothing availability. So I moved back into... You got a tough life. I'm gonna give you the buck, dude. You going into Target just to record a video about how you can't find clothes in Target? This woman sets herself up for failure. You know how many other videos she has on her channel going into Target and being disappointed that they don't have plus size clothing that fit her? By the way... They do have a plus size section, but she's just so fat that none of the clothes fit her, which is really, really sad. December, and this is now my current local Target. You can see the entire right side of the store is devoted to straight size women's clothing. There are different areas for... That's another thing. I think that we need to focus more on, like, men's clothing. I get it. Dudes don't go shopping. And if you didn't know, I think it's something like 70 80 or 80% of the buying power in America is literally devoted to women. Like, women buy 80 to 70 to 80% of things. Which is, uh, bitches be buying shit, I guess. I don't fucking know, dude. And if guys do buy stuff, it's usually, like, very, very expensive things that don't really make any sense. Like, a $9,000 computer or, like, a TV that's, like, 14 k that, like, the entire wall mounted or something like that. Well, women are buying practical stuff. Men don't even buy their own, men don't even buy their own stuff. Like, dudes don't buy deodorant. And I know this because, I, have you ever, answer me this, have you ever in your entire life seen a dude in the deodorant section of your local store? I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I haven't even seen myself in there. And when guys are there, they don't even know what's going on. They're just like looking around like, what is all this? This is, is this real? Like, what am I even supposed to do here? And it's incredibly impractical. Like, I remember one time I was dating a girl. She was like, can you go and buy me tampons? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And I walked in and then I looked at the shelf and I was like, dude, there's like 50 of them. Like, they're all different sizes and things like that. And I called her up. I was like, which one? And she was like, oh, um, I got a heavy flow, so just buy this one. And I was like, okay, but there's like fucking like 10 of them. Like, which one? And they were all different prices and things like that. It's kind of like, you know when girls, they go, hey, can you go in my bag and can you get this for me? No, I can't. Here's your bag. You can look for it. I don't even understand what this is. How do you, how do you have this much stuff in this bag? It weighs 50 pounds. Why are you wearing this? This is crazy. Um, for dudes, it's like we just have two pockets and maybe the back pocket that we don't really use because we're afraid that if we take something out of it, it might look like we're gay. But anyway, I don't even understand what we're talking about. But a lot of clothing options for men are non-existent. Like when I go to clothing stores, um, it's like one shelf and like the one shelf is being occupied by five guys looking uh, looking down on it. Like they're just depressed perpetually like, ah, I don't really want to wear this, but I don't want to. It's only got though. I haven't been shopping in four years. My clothes are falling apart. Nah, I could probably wait another five years. That's literally it. I remember literally being in high school one time and I had a teacher, really great guy, really great guy. He got his moped stolen outside the school, which is really, really tough. But this dude every day used to walk in with clothes that were completely covered in holes, right? All the time. And I remember one time I asked him, I was like, why are you wearing these clothes? And he said, I just, I, I don't go, I don't go clothes shopping. And I just wear these clothes because they fit. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, but aren't like, you have money. He was like, yeah, I'm getting married in like four months or something like that. And I was like, oh yeah. And he was like, my wife hates it. Why I wear these clothes? But I love them. Like these are my favorite clothes. Like a lot, I feel like a lot of women don't understand that a lot of dudes are, we don't really care. Like a lot of dudes just don't give a fuck. Like as long as it fits and it's comfortable, most dudes don't give a fuck. And to his, some dudes, like metrosexual guys, do care a little bit. Like for me personally, I like wearing boots, right? But mainly because I like the way that they, they look on me. And then also I like the little, you know, 1.5 inches that they give me on the height. Um, trust me, if I had the ability to take inches off somewhere else and put it on my boots or my, my feet, I would 100% do that. I would still have a lot of meat left too. A lot of meat, trust me on that. But it's just, the clothing section at men's, uh, the men's section, dude, it's like a quarter of the store sometimes at that. I remember one time I walked over to a Macy's and we were, li we literally had like, I remember I was going, I went shopping with this girl and she was like, David, we need to get you clothes. Like you never get clothes. And I was like, okay. And we went clothes shopping and we walked into the Macy's and we went to the, the men's clothing section. I shit you not. It was like on one floor and it was like 20% of one floor and the other side of it was the was like a Toys R Us and then the other side was like lingerie and the other side was just like coats for women and I was just like I was so depressed because I was like looking over to the stuff I was like none of this fits like this shit looks gay 
Like, I'm not wearing red dress pants. Like, what the fuck is this? Anyway. The different brands, and then there's also an athletic wear section and a sleepwear section. There is quite literally so much clothing that if I had all of these options, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I spotted one plus size mannequin in the swim section, <laughs> but even though this sign says they have up to a size 24, I didn't see anything that was plus size in the swim section. Damn. This they stay got that one woman, dude. I've seen this woman at my fucking Target, too, bro. You know how many times I've seen this woman? I, th I think she's at multiple stores, too. They must have, like, one black woman on speed dial that they call up. Like, listen, we need somebody with multiple chins that's black, that's representation, that's going to look look happy. That's what they hired this woman for, dude. Then you don't got any other black woman, dude. Get your shit together, Target. However, is the sad plus size section. It is. I swear, this woman literally sets herself up for failure, dude. It's like going into a gay bar and then going into a gay bar as a straight man and expecting women with vagina to hit you up. Like, what are you doing, bro? Why are you here if you didn't want to suck dick? What's the point? Why are you here? You walk into the bathroom and you're surprised there's a, there's a dick coming through the glory hole? Be a man, lick the rim, and finish the guy off. It's not. Why are you here? Why are you here? Same thing in this. You knew. I've watched videos on this woman's channel before. I've seen this woman go into Targets, be disappointed. Oh, they don't make plus sizes in my size. This is really disappointed. She even one time, I remember going into the, the changing room to try something on she knew wasn't going to fit and then was acting surprised that it didn't fit. It wasn't going to fit. You're big as fuck. Your thighs are literally the size of like, I don't even know, like four baby seals. It's too big. And this woman goes into these Targets. I don't know how many times you can make the same video on the same target. Like, oh, uh, I went I went back to Target. Guess what? They don't got any clothes again three months later. Guys, guess what? I went into my local Target. I already know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. Just click off the video. Three months later, four months later. Guys, guess what? <sighs> my Target doesn't have any clothes. I know. I know it doesn't have any clothes, dude. It's obvious. You can't fit shit. Nothing's going to fit you. I don't even know why you walked into the Target. You're literally doing a shit for, for the content, I guess. But it's like... If you're disappointed, you're literally just setting yourself up for failure. What are you expecting? There's one tiny little area in the back by the fitting rooms and maternity and clearance. And all they have are very basic options. Things that quite literally, I wouldn't even want to try on. Because they're not my style at all. Well, you got to also understand, dude. Like, you guys... You, your bodies are unfortunately shaped, okay? Like, there's not really much you can do to contour bodies like that. And for thinner people, there is a lot, you know? And it's already really difficult to find clothes that even fit on women in general. Being with a woman, being with a woman and understanding bra sizes and things like that, it's incredibly inconsistent. And bra sizes can literally change from like, I don't even know, month to month. I remember I was dating this girl. And she had H boobs, right? She lost a bunch of weight. She went down to Ds. But then when she got sized... Um, they were like, oh yeah, you're, you're in D's or whatever, right? So she got bras, but then like three months later, she was a little bit lighter than that. So none of the bras fit and she couldn't wear them because they were all like impractically sized and they felt uncomfortable. But then the next month and then bras fall apart. Apparently I have no idea how they fall apart as much as they do. I don't fucking know. I've been wearing the same underwear for like 10 years. None of mine, like I'm sure like two of them have holes in them, but they all, you wouldn't notice. But for women, it's like, you guys have to, you have, you guys have to like go through like 20 different shops and you have to get sized up and it's different in different places and things fit differently. So it's like, I don't even understand how you guys put up with that shit. For me, it's like I go into one store, I find underwear that are roughly in my size and I wear them for 10 years. But for women, it's like, oh, my underwear don't fit anymore. Oh no, my underwear have holes in them. Oh no, I don't want to wear these anymore because they don't look cute. They don't look cute for who? Oh, I just want you to think that I'm pretty when I wear them. I don't give a fuck. They're underwear. What are you talking about? No, I don't care. Stop making excuses. You just want to buy shit. Just be honest. It's not for me. I hate when people do that, where they go like, oh, I'm doing this for you. No, you're not. I don't give a fuck. What are you talking about? What? Like, I remember one time I was like dating, I was dating this black girl and she was like, oh, um, I just don't want to wear this bonnet outside. I was like, why not? She was like, oh, because people are going to think I'm ugly. And I was like, what? I don't... You're going to think I'm ugly for wearing it. I was like, I don't care. It's a bonnet. Like, you're trying to protect your hair. You're supposed to. And by the way, if you're somebody, and you don't have to be black, by the way, I mean, you might get a little bit of looks when you're outside as a white woman or like a white guy wearing a bonnet outside. But honestly speaking, it doesn't really matter, dude. If you're trying to protect the hair, protect the hair. That's what it's all about. I know some people that have literally spent decades of their life growing their hair, the most beautiful bouquet of hair you could possibly imagine, and ruin it.
ruin it off of one haircut. Ruin it off of something that just randomly happens. If you want to protect your hair and you're having a bad hair day or you just did something the night before where you did like a protein mask or whatever the fuck, it's okay to go on Shein and buy like a two for 20, sorry, 20 for $2 uh, silk silk fucking bonnets okay listen i understand that it was made from child labor and you're you you know when you put it on your head you're probably going to feel the grease of the indonesians hands that were like sewing it together it might be a little blood on it listen dude okay i don't claim to be the most the most ethical person but it is what it is you're gonna buy it anyway let's be honest okay but anyway I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Don't try to make it seem like I'm the one that is trying to make you go outside wearing your hair in like this most beautiful state. We're not even going anywhere. We're going to like fucking, we're going to stop and shop, dude. It's like nothing. To, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm not even trying to be in there for more than 20 minutes. I just need to get eggs. What are you talking about? Why do you need to do your hair? Just throw on the bonnet. I don't give a fuck that you're wearing sweatpants. We're not going anywhere. 70% of women in the U.S. are a size 16 or over. With the majority of the population being plus size, why are we still not offering it in store? You just are impractical in terms of the clothing options. But that's really, really sad that most women are like that, dude. Got to be better, dude. Got to be better. I cannot tell you how many people have commented on my video about Target asking what the term straight size is. I have never even thought <laughs> about that term. Straight size is like... um. Like normal size people, <laughs> normal size people, but I think it stretches up to an XXL. Like being in question because like my size has always been referred to as plus size. So. Yeah, but plus size, you know, I really hate it that these people do, they really hijack the word plus size. At one point, plus size might have meant a person that was you know, a little bit bigger, a little bit. That's what it meant like 10 years ago when somebody's like, oh, I'm plus size, right? Nobody ever thought somebody was 400 pounds. Nobody ever thought that somebody was 300 pounds. Nobody ever thought that. You were thinking of somebody that was maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 at most above what they were supposed to be. Nobody ever thought, nobody was imagining somebody that was so beast that they had to use one of those scooters to walk around in or they had to go like this when they walked and they had like ton, tons of fucking thighs and whatever. Nobody thought that. And I really hate, that the plus size community is now just ridiculously ambiguous, dude. It's crazy, okay? You guys are literally representing people that are 400 pounds, 800 pounds, 120 pounds. Like, I just don't get it. Like, it's too ambiguous. You guys need to have better words. Because if I talk to somebody and they go, oh, I'm plus size. And I'm like, dude, get the fuck. What do you mean plus size, dude? You're fucking diabetic and your leg is hanging off because you're so fat. You're not plus size. You're dying. It's not... It's not have better words, okay? Really have better words. And you flavor them up a little bit too much, okay? BBW, get the fuck out of here, dude. You're dying. It's just what it is. BBW, plus size, thick, a little extra. Get the fuck out of here. You know what guys call ourselves? Fat. That's it. That's it, okay? You're fat. And if a guy's too big, you go, damn, dude, you're fucking big as shit. You're fat. You're, you're, you're massive. That's what we call us. We don't, we don't sugarcoat it. I don't know why so many women... Like, especially on dating apps, it's the worst shit to look through dating apps and see a woman that goes, I'm plus size. And you look through the picture like, damn, I, you you need a fucking panorama to take this fucking picture. I can't even see the end from end. Where the fuck is it? Where are you taking this picture at? Jesus Christ. You need like the Hubble telescope to take a picture of you. It's so, it's crazy. You, better words. Just better words. Not all women, not all women have to always preference that. But the fact that there is a descriptor, like, doesn't seem weird to me. But I can't tell you how many people are like, what is this woke title True. for clothing? Also, why is it called straight sizing? I'm gay. <laughs> like, I'm a lesbian. Nobody, nobody's saying that. That's crazy as fuck, bro. <laughs> That's crazy as shit, bro. Did somebody sit there and go, straight sizes? It's, honey, I'm gay. I can't wear any of this. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what the fuck this shit means. Stop acting. If somebody genuinely did that, that's crazy as fuck. Stop being their friends. That's insane. That's like somebody going, uh, oh, you're, you're fat phobic. And they go, how am I fat phobic? I'm not scared of fat people. What? What's, 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 what's wrong with being, I, who's scared of fat? Nobody, nobody uses it like that. You know what the fuck we're talking about. Or somebody that goes, you're, bro, you're being gay. And they go, you know what? I am gay. I am gay. I love being gay because gay means happy. Like, you know what the fuck we're talking about, dude. Stop acting like this is some far-fetched shit. You, you stop trying to relabel re the words. Use the basic terminologies. <laughs> yeah, size. but nobody's doing that, by the way. Nobody's going like, oh, straight size. I guess I can't wear it because I'm gay. Nobody's doing that. I'm gay. Like, I'm a lesbian. Okay. <laughs>
Is this just a video just to tell people that you're a lesbian? <laughs> Hashtag date me, I'm lesbian. Straight sizing. I'm gay. Like, I'm a lesbian. Cool. <laughs> it, it, I'm David. It feels, and I tr really try not to draw parallels that don't make sense, but it feels very much like how people will be like, don't call me a cis person. But it's like, but that's, that's what you are though. And that's just an adjective that describes what you are. True. But people don't like being called that stuff because it's like, it's like new age. It's like when people say like, oh, are you cis? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm bro. No, but it's like, dude, it, when people say that shit nowadays, it kind of takes away a lot of flavor from what somebody is organically. Like I remember when somebody, I remember one time I was in like this LGBT, um, I was in like this LGBT classroom that was drawing stuff and I went in with this person that me and her were not gay but we went in anyway because we decided it was a cool thing and roughly the usually the LGBT people are cool people to be around but I remember I was at this thing and we invaded this event and this 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 LGBT person was like hey um so like what do you call yourself and I was like oh yeah I'm David and they were like yeah I know but like what's your pronouns and I was like I got a mustache, dude. You know what it is. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what? Look at me. Like, yeah, you know, and, just, and not 10 inches. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, dude? I got the whole Oscar Mayer factory down here. What are you talking about? I'm meated up. But no, I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a dude. And they were like, oh, um, is that like, that's cool. But I think that they were trying to like, try to poke around to see if I was like cisgendered. Sometimes it is a little off-putting. Like if you, I really don't like it when people, if you're trying to do something, like if you're trying to be transgender, I don't have a problem with it. Like, fine, go ahead and be your transgender self. But I hate it when people that are transgender don't actually try to be transgender. Like if you're a woman and you're trying to be a dude, dude, you, you're not trying at all. Like you're still wearing the Lululemons. You're still wearing the leggings. You're still wearing the fucking Crocs. You got your hair down. Like, bro, come on, straighten up, okay? Stop, don't take a shower for three days, okay? Wear flannel and wear pants that don't fit you, okay? Like, dress like your soldier boy from 2008. That's, do that, okay? It's like, you know, try to try a little bit. Like, all of a sudden, people hear a term that they've never heard before, and they're like, oh my god, I'm offended. <laughs> like, what is there to be offended by? I also saw people being like, it's just normal sizing. It's like, it, you there's no normal sizing there is a normal sizing and the fact that you can say there is no such thing as normal sizing is actually a red flag that is a terrible take there is normal sizing people for okay let's be honest here for a second for all of time were people obese no no so it's not normal i'm gonna keep it a buck with you it's not normal okay is not normal to be obese the end of statement okay for all of time people were average size people were the weight that they were supposed to be if you were five foot ten as a man you probably weighed like 160 to 170 if you were five foot three as a woman you probably weighed like 150 or a little bit below so don't sit there and try to act like this normal sizing is a bad term so you're okay with words like you're okay with words like plus size and straight sized and all this other stuff but you're not okay with normal sized all right whatever you say it can be called standard sizing. It can be called- That's another, that's a synonymous term. Standard sizing and normal sizing are synonymous. There's no normal sizing. It can be called standard sizing. It can be called straight sizing. In women's fashion, it can also be called missy. Like there are a lot of different terms. And just because I'm using a term that you know nothing about because you know nothing about like fashion brands and sizing and all of that stuff. Dude, what is this like speaking from a realm of like authoritarianism? Like, hey, yeah, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So trust me. Doesn't mean that it's reason to be offended. Ah, uh, dude, this woman talking from talking about offending is actually hilarious bro because this woman i believe is like one of the most offended persons persons on the internet dude this person literally makes videos because somebody says something that they disagree with like wasn't that entire last video just literally about because somebody said something mean to them yeah <laughs> fuck let's talk about this yeah look at this shit yeah what are you, what are you talking about particular thing because the only place that I know of that it It makes me want to cry. Why can't everything be all together, all the same stuff, in all the same sizes, in the same spots? It's just not practical. Like, it just doesn't make sense to do that. You can't do that. Like, it, we don't even have that same standard with anything in, in, in our entire reality. Like, things are separated all the time. 
attempted this was Old Navy. I'm still bitter at Old Navy and all of the executives that I have talked to on LinkedIn because they had the right idea. Like they started in a really good place. Yeah, if you don't know, Old Navy, I think like two years ago, they stopped doing the plus sized, um, they had like a whole section dedicated to plus size women or plus size people, but they had to stop doing it because it was literally bankrupting them. Uh, so they had to stop. <laughs> they got rid of their plus size section. You could shop anywhere in the store and all styles were carried in what, like extra small through 4X. Everything was the same price. Yeah, they also got a lot of shit because 4X wasn't big enough, apparently. Which, like I said before, uh, is never you, you're never going to appease these people. These people literally eat themselves. Because if you want plus-size clothes and then a company does it, but it's never enough. Like, it's not big enough. It's not fashionable enough. It's never enough for these people. So they're going to always complain about it. So you're never going to be in the right. Why would you ever do it? You guys are literally impossible to please. It was all the same styles. They did what we have been asking for forever. And then nine months later, an article comes out in, was it the New York Times? Saying that the plus sizes being in store was phasing out their yeah. core customer because people who typically go in to shop in store, straight size people, weren't able to find their size all the time. Oh my God, that's so crazy crazy that you would go into a store and not be able to find your size yeah but that just got that should just like tell you something so like when you're when you're saying that plus size people will show up if they do make clothes and you're telling me that 70 percent of women in america are plus sized or fat whatever and you're telling me that when the store does do that you still don't have that you they still don't go in they still don't go, they still don't go in this is the exact store that you're talking about and they still don't go in and they're making less money. Doesn't this actually disprove everything that you said at the very beginning of this video? Isn't that actually hilarious how you said that? Huh? I mean, like, let's let's do it for instance, right? 70% of women, like you said, are obese or fat in America, right? And then let's say I think it's like 70-80% of women uh are the buying power in America. So they should be the ones that are going in and buying the clothes. So what the fuck happened? So what the fuck happened? Why did they phase them out if this was gonna be so lucrative for them? It wasn't lucrative. They weren't going in. There wasn't enough demand. There wasn't enough. Okay. Well, you know what, bro? I mean, honestly, how can you make this video after the one we just saw and then not draw parallels? It's almost like they were experiencing what plus size people experience all the time. It's, it's, isn't it great to just be a victim all the time to continuously always claim that you're always going to be victimized and everybody else is the problem and you're never the actual issue because how can you be the issue? You're oppressed. It's got to be agonizing to live like this and never actually take responsibility for yourself. But because straight size people were the ones experiencing it, it was a problem and they needed to step back and phase that out. And before they wouldn't have phased it out if it wasn't making money, okay? There's a reason why every single year they make a new Call of Duty, okay? They're always garbage. They always come out that, they always come out bad. They're terrible, but guess what? They make money. They make a lot of money. So when I see this um, and they go, oh, why do they phase them out? Because they weren't making money. If they were making money, dude, we live in a fucking capitalist country. We live, the, we live in the definitive capitalist country, the most capitalist country. And the only thing that drives this country is buying power. So if you, if a company is not making money or if it is making money and they phase it out, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Unless there was some underlying like conspiracy theory there, right? They just really didn't like fat people, which I disagree with. If they were making money, they would have fucking done it. Like I said, there's a reason why they make these dog shit video games nowadays and they continue to make the dog shit video games. Because even though me and you and most people can look at these games and go, this is garbage. Most people are buying this game. They don't give a fuck. And they just think that it's okay. Because they haven't... The point I'm making is, if it, if it continues to sell, they're going to do it. They're going to continue to do it. If they didn't do it, then they have to make a change, okay? There's a reason why people say, vote with your vote with your wallet. You can't continuously have something make no money and then just keep putting it out. That doesn't make any sense. They're going to stop doing it if they weren't making any money. So I wonder why they stopped doing it. Because they weren't fucking making money, dude. Before I hear one comment about how... Oh, they just didn't sell. I would love to be able to have access to Old Navy's actual numbers because their plus sizes sell out online constantly. Yeah, because they're not making a lot of them. That's the thing. Like, <sighs> all right, man. 
especially when they did this and they had all styles available and all sizes for the same price. The marketing needed to be better. People needed to know that their stores had these things. And if you want to go back to where I actually reviewed their website and saw that most of their stores didn't even advertise that they carried plus sizes, you can go do that because that video went viral. But like, it is not our fault that you guys have issues marketing and providing products. Like, it's never your fault, huh? It's never your fault. It's never, it's never up to us. Uh, it's never up to you. It's always up to other people. You can't decide on your own. So you're telling me it's not fat people's fault that they weren't going in and buying the clothes to make sure that those clothes were still there for more fat people to buy later on. It's not their fault. It's the company's fault for not advertising. It's not the company's fault for telling people. I, I mean, yeah, that seems I. Right. That seems okay. Yeah. That's not a consumer issue. That is a you issue. That if, if they were making money, they wouldn't. They would have. They would have kept going. But they weren't making money. And size is always. This guy's gay. Calling it gay. 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 It's the first thing that people notice about them. Looks too good. He's too. He's too good looking. I actually really appreciate. Always the first thing that people notice about them. I actually really appreciated this video, so go. That's on. true, though, 100%. Like, you do notice somebody's f size before anything else because it's it's an anomaly. When you see somebody, like, if you're walking or you meet up with somebody and that somebody is, like, big as fuck, dude. The other day, I had that same, man, I remember, dude, I was at a grocery store and it was a big woman, dude, and I didn't even see the cart behind her. That shit was so crazy. She was real big. She was big as fuck. She was taking up literally 75% of the aisle horizontally right like I couldn't go by her I remember literally I had to go by her and I said excuse me and when I tell you this woman was like oh okay and turned I still couldn't get by like she turned she turned horizontally so I can get by it was still I couldn't get by and she had to like push herself up against the fucking aisle I'm not in the wrong for that I gotta get to the other end of the fucking aisle I'm sorry that your body takes up literally the circumference of the entire fucking aisle get your shit together bro that's fucking crazy um but I knew that it was going to be a problem as soon as I saw her. But what the fuck was I supposed to do? Go back and around and go all the way fucking... No, fuck you. I'm going around. I'm going right through, dude. Fucking, I'm sorry that your body is so ridiculous. By the way, don't touch me with your musky-ass body water. Anyway. Um, yeah, that is something. It's the first thing that people notice, yeah. And watch it. And if you want to watch the one before that that he's referring to, go watch that one too. But I wanted to talk about how there's this common thing that comes up, especially when you post content online as a plus-size person, that we make fatness our whole personality. And this actually isn't something that I've heard people bring up in a while, but I know that it, it does come up from time to time. But what this person said is extremely accurate. Because of our bodies, <laughs> that is the first thing that people see. And usually there are assumptions made off of our appearance. That's true. Most people make assumptions based off of the way you look. Like if you walk, if you're just a normal person wearing sweatpants, Crocs, and a, and a t-shirt, most people are just like, uh, that person's probably just woke up or some shit like that. But if you see somebody walking down the street with like a suit and a tie, then you're going, oh, wow, look at that guy. Looks really nice. That guy's probably going somewhere. You, you walk with passion. People notice stuff, okay? And it's obvious. It's really obvious. There's a reason why when you show up on, when you show up to get a job, right? You go to a job interview. You're not showing up wearing a wife beater looking like CJ from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Nah, dude, you're showing up. You're wearing the fucking boat shoes. You're wearing the khakis. You're wearing the fucking dress shirt. You know what I'm talking about? You got a haircut probably. You look nice. You know why? Because you're trying to put on your best. You're trying to give off that good impression, that first good impression. So yes, yes, 100%. If you're fat and people are going to notice that and people are going to make assumptions that are probably true. If you're fat, that means you have a poor you have a poor understanding of nutrition. If you don't have a poor understanding of nutrition, you just don't give a fuck about yourself. Both are not good. Anyway, it's just like, I don't know why this is even something you talk about. It's obvious. Yes. Because of that. And it's not <laughs> that we're all making it our whole personality. It's just that we know how we appear to the world. There is quite possibly nothing that you could say to us that we haven't already heard variations of throughout our entire life. I got it. I, I know something that she has never heard before that she hasn't heard variations for in her entire life. You ready? You ready for it? Your skin is as delicate as a newborn baby sea turtle. And I think that you smell like a deep fried gazelle in batters of lilacs. That's something she's never heard before. 
could say to us that we haven't already heard variations of throughout our entire life. Especially if you have grown up fat like I And then you should also understand, too, like, if you've dealt with this shit for literally your entire life and you still do nothing about it, what the fuck is good with you? Like, do you just not see that as a problem at all? Like, for your whole life? None of it? I don't know. Never stick. We know how the world sees us. We know the assumptions that are out there. We know things like poor medical treatment are a thing. We know the stereotypes. What about the poor medical treatment that you're doing to yourself on a daily basis? Like, what about the fact that you're just, like, piling literally useless weight on your body doing nothing at all i would really because for me right i could probably run up and down the stairs three or four or five times without being out of breath right but for this person i would struggle to them for them to walk up the stairs probably for the first time because they can think about this right i weigh right now about 150 pounds right this person probably weighs 300 probably double maybe maybe a little bit more think about if you at my body weight, let's say you were 150, double it. Now double it with something that's not helping you. Like if you muscled up and you were a muscle mommy or a muscle daddy, that'd be all right because you're 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 muscled up. That weight's gonna be doing stuff for you, right? Maybe you have more leg mass, so you're able to lift more and things such and so forth. Now add the weight, take away all that muscle, and just add fat. That's not doing anything. It's just weight. It's literally just weight. And not only is it just weight, but it's actually putting your life at a detriment. And now try to walk up those same steps. Do that every day. Do that every day for the rest of your life and have somebody tell you that it's not a good thing. Do that every day of your life and have somebody tell you that it's not a good thing and have a doctor tell you that you're on life. Your life is literally on the brink of collapse because you're doing nothing about it. And then do that every day with all that stuff and then make a TikTok video about how people are mistreating you because they're seeing something that's not actually true. I guess, I guess. Stereotypes that exist. None of this is news to us. That's why we make plus size content to try to shift some of those perceptions that people have to try to disprove that we are, you know, only our weight, only how much we weigh. You don't actually disprove anything. Like all you do is just complain consistently about the same issues to disprove all of the stereotypes that are out there that really don't fit a lot of us. My point is like what? when you see someone Get to know them as a person. No, nah, that's not how that works. No, nah, bro, I'm, I'm done with this fucking, I'm done with this idea of like, oh, if you see somebody out in public or you meet somebody, don't just assume that because they weigh 400 pounds that they're suffering with negative consequences or that they have a poor, a poor relationship with food and they, they don't take care of themselves well. Get to know them. Understand their backstory. Get to, you know, really dive deep. No. Who the fuck are you? What? You, you like... You, you want me to real deal pull up your Wikipedia and figure out what your deep intricacies and as if that's going to like disprove any of the shit that I already have about you? Probably not. Probably not. What am I even going to find out? Like, oh, you weigh 400 pounds and maybe that one time when you were nine years old, somebody kicked your dog. I don't fucking know. And that like that was a transitional period for you. What is that fucking going to do for me? I don't give a fuck. You're dying. Like, what is that? Okay. Yeah, we all have dramatic events too, bro. All right. It is what it is. Like I knew a girl that got a UTI when she was like fucking 14 years old because she went down a water park. Okay. It is what it is. We all have dramatic events that happen to us, right? It is what it is. Now, is that an excuse to mistreat your body on a daily basis? Maybe for some people. Sure. I mean, on the, like, you know what? I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. Okay. The other day, yesterday, this actually happened yesterday. I was at a Mickey D's, okay? I'm at a Mickey D's, not every day, maybe once. I'm at a Mickey D's every other day, right? I went in there to get a, oh, I went in to get an iced coffee, right? And I was waiting for my order because the iced coffee machine was out of whatever the fucking coffee was. And the guy, the Mexican dude was like, I be right back. I sorry, bye. I sorry, my friend. I'll be bye, bye. And he went back there to go fill it up. This dude walked in and he walked up to me. And he said, listen, man, you got, you got like, you got money, bro. But just like, Listen, let me tell you something. And he was drooling, right? He was drooling. He's like, man, let me get you this money, bro. Listen, let me tell you something before you say no, before you say anything. Listen, dude, I, I only use I only use the money for food. I only use the money for for medical services, this and that. And I was like, I ain't got shit. Nah, I don't, I, nah, I don't got money. And I didn't have money because I don't carry cash very often. I lied. I do carry like a 20 on me every once in a while, right? But I said no. He walked up to the lady that was at the register. He said, same shit. And the lady was like, you want something right now? You want something right now? I'll get you something right now. I'll get you something right now. He's like, ah, oh, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah. I just need the money. 
And then she was like, well, nah. And he was like, okay. And he just walked out. He didn't want food. He wanted drugs. He wanted alcoholic beverages. He wanted something that wasn't something that was going to benefit him. And that's all right. If that's what you want, that's what you want. You know, who am I to tell you what is and is not wrong, right? In the sense of like, if that's what you want to do for yourself. I mean, obviously, I don't think it's wrong. But if you don't think it's wrong, I, I mean, there's nothing I could do about it. I mean, I think that personally, if I was some way that I can give you some advice to get you off that. But some people, there's nothing you could do. You don't think that guy has had the time in his life to think about the, the mistakes he's made, and the, the, you know, all the consequences of his actions? Of course he has. But it's not up to me. I'm a random pedestrian. I don't know this fucking guy. I'm not here to talk to him and tell him that he's doing something wrong. I don't fucking know him. In the same way that you are just some random person that I'm meeting, and I'm supposed to look through your backstory to figure out why you're so fat and why it's not a bad thing? No, I don't. That's, that's dumb. That's literally dumb. That doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know you and you don't know me. I'm not entitled and you're not entitled for me to look through your Wikipedia page to, dis to discover some deep details about that one time that you your life changed for the worse and that's why you gained weight. I don't care. I don't care. I just don't care. I know that might sound really insensitive, but I know you don't care either. You don't care about me. That's fine too. I don't think you should care. You don't know me. So I don't know, it's just dumb. This is a dumb way of trying to reconcile this shit. But anyway, let's listen to the rest of the video. It's only like 10 seconds left. A lot of us. My point is, when you see someone, get to know them as a person before you have any opinions about them. That's never going to happen. Just judge them based on what they look like. Never going to happen. This woman is living in some fairy tale world. That is crazy. And she doesn't even actually do what she's saying. Because there's no way you do. You're literally always going to make assumptions based off of how they look or how the way they act and all this other stuff. That's crazy. That's literally insane. This woman is like working off some like crazy idea of how the world should work. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you enjoyed today's video um, and you, oh, by the way, yeah, thank you for everybody that's subscribed. Thank you, everybody that's a member. I appreciate every single one of you, every single one of you, by the way, I love, I love you. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in quarter because I have a quarter, the forgotten currency. Nobody uses these anymore, but I have one. And it is one from, I don't know, 2008. 2008. Look at that, dude. The aughts. 2008. And speaking of quarters, right? Quarter is a quarter of a dollar, which is 25 cents. 25 cents. I know you are worth way more than that. You are worth so much more. You are literally the embodiment of worth. You do stuff every single day to make yourself more valuable. And let me be honest with you for a second. If we were way back in the day, like back in Alexander the Great's time where he was out there before battle sacrificing goats and he was using them to like appease the gods or whatever the fuck. And you were, you were alive back then and I was like a god or not a god, but I was like a king or whatever and I need to sacrifice somebody, the most beautiful creature in the whole land. I'd be looking at you 100% because I know if I did, you would, you would supply my lands with like millions of acres of, of, of wheat and other things. I don't know what they, they ate back then, but after I went up to you and I was like, we need to sacrifice this person, I would look upon you and go, wait, wait, we can't, we can't, this person is way too, this, this person is not only beautiful, but they're beyond successful, they're beyond everything, we need to make them a deity, forget about, forget, just kill the goats, just kill the goats, and maybe a few gazelle, because this person is way too valuable. Nope, I refuse. I refuse. And that's the way I feel about you. That's the way I feel. You are so beautiful that the idea of sacrificing you would be like obvious like for people like 2,000 years ago. But I wouldn't because I know that you are way too beautiful and it needs to be emphasized. I would deify you instead. But anyway, um... We're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description of this video and the description of the channel. If you want to check out any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.